What is up boys and girls? In this video, I'm going to show you a very, very important pattern technique um, that basically uh, implies to all programming languages, but in Golang, it's, it's a very important pattern I'm using all the time. Uh, it's basically uh, make a function, accept and do whatever you want it to do pattern, right? Also called the decorator pattern or maybe the middleware pattern. It's a very important aspect and I swear to God this, um, I'm using this all the time. I'm even teach this in the full-time GoDev program, which is by the way, guys, for the people that don't know, um, for the people that are willing to become a full-time Golang engineer, I'm making a complete program from A to Z, all batteries included, the complete Golang syntax concurrency. Um, we even going to build two insane projects, full real world examples, the JSON API, it's gonna be in hotel reservation backend and we're also gonna build a complete microservice stack, uh, which includes multiple services, inter-service communication, gateways, rate limiting, Grafana, Prometheus, Kafka, the whole shebang is included. Uh, check that out if you uh, are interested. All right, without any further ado, let's do this, right? So <laughs> basically, uh, first of all, uh, we're going to make two simple functions uh, that mimic third party, third party uh, library functions, right? Because um, that is where the problems resides, right? Most of the time, these third party stuff, they come up with interfaces, they come up with uh, with functions and you cannot modify them, right? Because they, they, they come from a third party library, right? So the first thing we're gonna do here is, uh, let's make our funk main real quick here, right? Maybe boost up um, the font size a little bit for the blind homies. So we have this funk main, let's make a function and this function is gonna be, um, yeah, let's call this an execute func, right? An execute function. This is coming from a third party library. Very important to understand, right? And this is gonna take in an event and that's going to be an execute uh, event, right? An execute event here. And we're gonna return nothing, right? And what this function is gonna do is basically gonna take in this event function and it's going to, let's make this interface real quick. We're gonna say, um, not an interface, we're gonna make this a typed function. We're gonna say execute uh, event, right? Which is going to take a string here and it's going to, actually, if you wanna, if you type your functions, you don't need to provide these things. And that's the only thing it's gonna do, right? Type execute event and we are gonna execute here an, um, uh, we're gonna, a simple string, for example, foo bar uh, bus, right? Something simple, right? Just like that. Uh, cannot call none function, um, of course, because I didn't do this. Boom, now we're good, right? So basically this uh, is coming from a third party lib, right? Very important to understand, right? So we have this stuff, it's all good. And normally what we should do is something like this, right? We call this execute and <clears throat> let's make our function here on top. We're gonna say func my execute func here and um, it's gonna take in a string, which is this. And we are gonna say um, FMT print LN, for example, uh, this string, right? So basically that's the only thing we're gonna do, right? So let's in main here, we're gonna say my execute func, call this a day, open this up and do a go run dot, boom. And you see it's printing out foobar pass, right? Because it's coming from uh, my x func, right? This thing, you see, up, do it again, actually, to be honest, boom, my x func, right? Simple, right? This is this is default stuff. This is where basically uh, the interesting part comes, right? And it's very, guys, I swear to God, this is a very, very important pattern, right? Uh, <clears throat> so basically, but okay, let's say uh, we cannot modify these functions here, right? Uh, but we wanna inject. This is also some kind of dependency injection technique, right? Very important because we want to inject our database into uh, here, right? We wanna, we wanna have access to database, access to DB. Right, but how do we do that? Well, we can make it a global a global thing, but that's <laughs> hey, that's bad because how are we gonna test this with a global DB? That's completely whack, right? Nobody's doing this. Um, so basically, let's say we have, for example, an uh, DB. Um, yeah, and it's gonna be an interface, right? Interface, and this DB is gonna have a store function, and it's gonna take in uh, a string, and maybe it's returning an error or something. I don't know. And then we're gonna make our own DB real quick. Um, that's gonna be a type. Let's call this store, which is gonna be a structure with nothing attached, uh, no values attached here. We're gonna say func as pointer store. 
can I type pointer store and we're gonna say uh, of course it's gonna be store here it's gonna take in a string and that's gonna return an error right and we're gonna say fmt println um, storing into db this s right boom uh, of course we return an error we're gonna return nil because everything is fine <clears throat> we have a problem here because we have duplicated s that's no problem we're gonna call this a value just like this uh, value, perfectly fine, right? So how can we actually do this? Well, we can do the what I called the make a function, do whatever the fuck you want it to do and accept uh, that you want it to accept, aka the decorator pattern. So what we're gonna do is, is this my execute func, instead of saying it's gonna take a string, we're gonna say no, that's not gonna happen. We're gonna take in a db, which is not a store here, that would be bs, we're gonna make, this is the DB, an interface, right? Very important. And instead of uh, returning nothing, we're gonna return this execute func, this execute fm, which is coming from the third party library, right? So then we're gonna return here, right? What we're gonna return? We're gonna return a function signature uh, from this execute func, right? So uh, that's gonna be return a function, which is gonna take in a string here, right? And it's gonna return nothing. So we're gonna copy this thing into here. And now, uh, if I center this, what we can do here, what's going on? Yeah, what we can do here is basically we could say db store this string here, right? Uh, can we please? Yes, boom, just like that. So uh, that's what we want, right? We want to have our db. That's what we did here, right? Look at this. We injected our db into this function. We the previous version we could not we could not access it. Now we can. Of course, this is going to be a problem here because it's telling us cannot use my execute func value of type yada yada because uh, it's not the correct type. Of course not. We need to actually do this, right? And then we're going to say that our db, to be honest, we could do it like this. Uh, let's make it clear. We're going to say store or s, right? It's going to be an n store, just like this. Hop, hop. And then we can actually say inject this storage here, which could be anything, right? Because it's an interface. Right now it's a store. We can make a Mongo store, Postgres store, uh, vector database shenanigans. It doesn't really matter because it's an interface, which basically means it could be anything that we want it to be uh, if it implemented this store method, right? Or a subset or, uh, or multiple uh, of these interface uh, methods. But for now there is one, right? So if we run this function right now, uh, go run dot. You see that we are executing uh, our function and we're also storing it into the DB. Hey, this looks like good to me, isn't it? Right? So uh, this is basically uh, what I call uh, the decorator pattern, right? Uh, and I teach this all, all over the place, right? I'm using this all over the place. Um, it's a very, very uh, interesting pattern that is actually it's not that used that much. I, I, I do not see this uh, at very often, but it's such a powerful pattern. And if you know this, in the beginning, it's a little bit hard to grasp. I can completely understand that, but um, it's so powerful and you can do way more with these things, especially uh, for the people that are interested. Like I said before, fulltimegodev.com, my program, we are using this all over the place, right? We are modifying, we are doing our logging metrics. We, we wrap we, like an onion, right? Like an onion and we wrap things on wrap things and wrap things. Uh, so we, do, we have a beautiful dependency injection without pain. That's what it is. Um, and what could be a, uh, another good use case before it's already uh, eight minutes in the video, which is basically means that 90% is already piecing out, but it's for the, for the people that are, stick, that are sticking, uh, I have some good news. For example, here in our main, right? Um, we're gonna have uh, here, for example, an uh, HTTP handler, uh, handle func, right? For HTTP stuff, can we please, yes. And we're gonna say slash here, uh, the root, for example, and we're gonna say handler, right? So basically, if you're gonna make a handler, let's make it here, a uh, func handler, which is gonna take in a W HTTP response uh, writer, like this, a pointer to an uh, HTTP dot request, right? And yeah, that's it. So now everything is fine. The problem is, where is my DB, right? Here, again, where is my DB? Nowhere to be found, right? <coughs> of course, in a handler, you want to have DB, right? Because otherwise it's it's gonna be a very boring application that does not save state, right? Which could be the case, but most of the time it doesn't. Just the, the same thing, right? You, you just do this, right? You're gonna say, uh, make, for example, uh, HTTP func, 
uh, for example, like that. And we're gonna say it's gonna be a DB, which is our DB interface here, and it's gonna return an HTTP handler func, right? Uh, and we're gonna return basically uh, this thing here. We're gonna copy this, paste that in, uh, just like that, right? And then we could do something like uh, DB store uh, some HTTP shenanigans, shenanigans. Boom, delete this handler. And then we could say here, uh, let's paste it below our store here, center the screen. This is gonna be make a make HTTP func with the store inside of it, save it, we have a problem. Uh, return, of course, we need to return a function here, guys. Right? Boom, save it. Uh, make HTTP func, make Boom, and now we have this beautiful uh, program that's well compiled, right? So it's gonna compile perfectly fine, boom, you see? Uh, this make HTTP func here, of course, you wanna have multiple handlers. Well, uh, you could do something like this, type HTTP um, func, which is gonna be a func of W, HTTP response um, writer, right? Or HTTP request, something like this. Um, no, that's actually bad. We're gonna do this, func db, db, right? That's what it's gonna be, and it's gonna return HTTP handler func. Yeah, beautiful. I think something like that. Um, is that true? No, that's, no, 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 that's not what we're gonna do. We're gonna return an error here, guys. Uh, this is on the fly. I didn't plan this for this video, but it is what it is sometimes. So we're gonna say make HTTP func. Uh, what we're gonna do here is, uh, we're gonna say DB. Maybe we're gonna give this an HTTP func here. Why is it basically doing this? It's so weird. Uh, Evan, right? Uh, now we're gonna say here, Evan DB. Of course, we need to actually have access to, um, yeah, 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 I'm gonna make this good, guys, no worries. HTTP response writer request, HTTP request, I'm so sorry, guys, uh, it's gonna return an error. Let's, pff, don't, don't, do not do that. Actually, to be honest, doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want. Um, so now we're gonna say, not enough arguments, that's true, because we're gonna say wr here, right? You could even say if error is this function, or function, error is not nil, right? You could do uh, some stuff here if you want. And then, of course, here we need to inject uh, a handler, right? And now we can say func handler. Uh, let's yoink everything inside of this brackets. Can we paste that in? Perfectly fine, error. Center the screen, return nil here, boom. Not enough arguments, I know that. So we're gonna say S, and then we're gonna say here, uh, handler, boom. And you're done, right? So you're basically completely modified uh, the handler of HTTP, and you can do a, a lot of more neat tricks, right? You could do, for example, like a, a context or something where you put these things in so you don't have uh, as much arguments, but you can, the possibilities are endless, right? You are the Bob Ross of your painting, you can do whatever you want. I hope this video uh, teaches you something, uh, and I say it again, uh, if you like this video, please consider subscribing, give me a thumbs up, leave some questions in the comments, jump into my Discord community, and for the people that really wanna be, become a full-time Golang engineer, or just wanna become uh, very, very, very good at it, uh, ready to enter the, in the, the professional industry, check Check out fulltimegodev.com and I'm looking forward to see you as a student in my program. Cheers.